Hey everybody, Todd Dills here, your host for this edition of Overdrive Radio, dropping to the podcast feed January 26, 2024, and live then at the world famous OverdriveOnline.com following Monday, January 29th. We're diving back into the nitty gritty today around the notion of predatory towing, whether after a crash or disabling event at the roadside or in a parking lot trap following the relatively new resource you heard about a few weeks ago, the American Transportation Research Institute's big report on the commonality of outsized tow bills and unethical practices, including ways to combat them. The Truckload Carriers Association held an online seminar earlier this week, attempting to raise awareness among carrier members there, but also to highlight some recent history legislative victories, particularly in Maryland. We'll hear from Dave Heller, a senior vice president at TCA, about that event and ways anyone can engage and inform themselves on the issues to potentially affect change for the better. I think the, the highlights, obviously, is going to be the, the cargo issue and not holding the cargo, not holding the truck or trailer. Those are going to be the highlights, without a doubt. I think that's one of the most important issues there. And certainly getting an understanding of what you're going to be t- what you're going to be charged, whether it's a tow or rate sheet that gets passed to the state and getting your towing company of choice. Um, yep work with the companies that certainly you like working with and have positive business relationships with are always good things and getting rules like that at the state level would be fantastic. We'll also hear from Overdrive's own Alex Lockie, who's been covering the rise, particularly of parking lot trap type situations since early last year, all of which has brought a big response from readers. I, I don't know, the floodgates broke open. I got a ton of emails from our readers, from other drivers. People kind of saw how I looked into um the one predatory towing case and you know came forward with a ton of their own stories it was probably the biggest response to an article i'd ever had at that point all that response likewise insights gleaned about just what is reasonable and not from the etcher report on predatory towing underpinned a new step-by-step guide on how to play defense against predatory practices published a few weeks back at overdriveonline.com It was aimed to answer two questions for the readership, particularly. You know, what do our readers, people who are over the road, owner operators, need to know about this? What can they do about it? It turned out really well, and I'll post a link to that guide in the show notes, but know that it's not the end of the story by any means. Stay tuned for further reporting suggested in some of the conversations that follow throughout the podcast. There is indeed a lot you can do if you know what you're looking at. As Dave Heller intimated, referencing a conversation he had recently with TCA's president about scrutiny of itemized invoices. Jim Ward and I were talking yesterday and he was like, this is a lot like getting a a hospital bill. When you go in for something and you get a bill that says you need surgical surgical instruments, but at the same point, you didn't have surgery. So why would you be getting billed for it? It's a lot like that. So pay attention to what you're being charged and certainly question it if, if there are questions that need to be asked. After the break, we'll dive in to start with Dave Heller setting up the reasoning behind the association's recent online seminar probing the subject of predatory towing. Keep tuned for play more from Alex Lockie, too. Are freezing temps putting the brakes on your diesel engine? For unbeatable protection against diesel fuel gelling, trust the experts at House Products. Stock up on House Diesel Treat, the nation's most trusted anti-gel, and to be safe from the harshest winter conditions, make sure you have House Diesel Lifeline on hand. The fastest acting gelling rescue product. Available nationwide, House Products are designed to keep you rolling through the toughest conditions. House, tested, trusted, guaranteed. Visit houseproducts.com. That's right. Find much more information at H-O-W-E-S, houseproducts.com. Here's Dave Heller, TCA Senior Vice President of Safety and Government Affairs. I think the reality is, is we wanted to demonstrate that there is a path forward. And a lot of these states or a lot of our carriers out there are faced with the unscrupulous practice of predatory towing, right? And certainly accidents happen and while we're not justifying the accidents there is a tow that has to go along with it and in some cases you're getting exorbitant fees attached to that tow that can be problematic oftentimes inaccurate so this was that opportunity to share with our members that yes this practice is going on certainly there are things you can do about it in addition to not just saying hey let's start lobbying this within our state capital and getting this fixed and getting language legislatively speaking at the state level there are practices that carriers are using right now to help 
problem solve this issue, you know, looking at your tow bill and, and know what it exactly is you're getting into when you're looking at it so that you can assure yourself it is not an overcharge. So in that case, there were a lot of things going on. This, As you know, this is becoming a, an awful practice that is permeating within the industry. And, and some of these bills become quite large when you start to look at the, I'm amazed and always shocked when I see some of them come out and I'm just kind of roll my eyes going, wow, it's good money if you can get it. This recent ASHRAE report did a pretty good job of giving folks a feel for what is reasonable. I it think. did. Yep. Um, and 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 also, um, and we've covered some of this too outside of that report, but in that report, there's a lot of great stuff as well. Just being on guard for certain things that that are not <laughs> reasonable, right? Like, you know, um, the uh, holding the holding the freight hostage kind of tactics and. And and what have you, you know, to charging for things that you shouldn't shouldn't be charged, and yep. docu- documenting what happens during these tows at the at the roadside, and you know if if you're looking at the bill and it says you know this happened, we had this piece of equipment there and it wasn't there, or it wasn't there for four hours, it was only there being used for like thirty minutes or something, and yeah, you can just Is correct. Is it a le- legitimate bill? And you, you kind of hit the nail on the head there, you know holding the equipment hostage or holding the cargo for ransom that can't be done these days and i think the reality is opening our membership's eyes to some of the practices that are out there that are happening that shouldn't be happening and i think it's important for our membership to know that there is a way out there are there are things that you can do to get your cargo back so that that load does get delivered to where it needs to be going or get your equipment back that's in question and i think that becomes the opportune time to educate our members on the process that are involved as it does relate to that actually report there's no doubt about it there are there are practices in there that you and i well, we'll read about their living it, and we want to make sure that they understand the implications of it and the ways that they can deal with it. TCA's membership is, by and large, sizable fleets. For owner-operators and small fleets faced with big tow bills, though, Overdrive's Alex Lockie found that playing defense might best start with a partner all have in some form or fashion. The best way to beat predatory towing is to not fight it yourself at all. I mean, this you don't want to touch it with a... 10 foot pole and the way to do that is to insure yourself against it that's what brand said you know he said that top five ways to fight or avoid predatory towing bills that you know would be insurance 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 lucky you referenced his talk there with insurance attorney adam brand of brand and tapley whose advice was also referenced in the entry report because simply it and especially for the the small carrier, you know, if if you're a mega fleet insuring, you know, 300 trucks, then maybe you know save on insurance and task your legal department with it. But if you're an owner operator, then you probably just want to get this off your plate as soon as you can because they are going to hold your equipment hostage they might even hold the cargo hostage so as soon as you can hand that over to the insurer the you know sooner the tower can have some guarantees in place and you know hopefully give you your equipment back also you know just being sympathetic you don't have to deal with the person you know i <laughs> It, you know, when you're getting that ticket or, you know, the tow bill or something, it's make you very angry to read the numbers there. Right. So and sure. and the way to, you know, after insurance, the most important thing to do is, you know, document all this stuff, communicate extremely clearly and professionally and in writing and to do all that when uh Basically, anytime you get behind the wheel and one of these non-consent police ordered toes can happen, it's a terrible reality. They could put a number on that paper that ends your trucking business, right? So you don't want to be in the immediate aftermath of one of these things and then having to, you know, begin. It's like that giant ticket for like a hundred thousand dollar tow is actually your invitation to a long drawn out court proceeding, you know, where maybe you 
could wrestle back half of that sum. Those things are expensive in and of themselves, and they take golly, they take it can take forever uh, for sure if if you can't uh, reach it like a quick settlement. Um, and you know another, th- I guess another point to emphasize, I think I'm just remembering some from your reporting, is you know that that insurance uh, angle, to, the importance of that having that provider uh, to to sort of walk you through this and 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 kind of relieve you of of some of the uh the heavy lift as it were one thing you got to have in order to make that possible is the is the right <laughs> amount of uh of coverage um to start uh and if if the insurer has a really low uh, limit for towing in your policy uh they can effectively you know wash their hands of it pretty quickly and then uh you know walk away say it's not my problem but you want it to be their problem too <laughs> insurers are starting to get the picture that towing bills can be really huge. So they are sliding some clauses in there. Brand said that he saw limits as low as five or $10,000 on towing. And I know that, you know, the, the towing coverage probably isn't the first thing an owner operator looks at in an insurance policy. They might not look at it at all. And a lot of the, cheaper, more attractive policies out there are probably, if they don't already, they're going to start having clauses in there limiting the amount they'll pay on a tow. And oh, that's also where the awareness of predatory towing becomes really important, right? Because if, say I am being diligent and I am reading the insurance policy and I see here, oh, it says uh, it covers up to $10,000 on towing, that seems like plenty, right? But right. then if if you don't know that, you know, predatory towing's on the rise, these invoices are hitting $120,000 or something, the insurance company, you know, you don't want to take on the legal fight, the investigation. They don't really want to do it either. They'd probably just rather pay that 10 grand, leave you with the rest of the 120 to um to fight over yourself rather than them spend the man hours and dispute it and all that stuff. One thing I had noted is in a lot of cases, it does set up for the ability. There is almost a a practice of getting these bills down um, when you know what you're looking for. And I think the one thing I have learned is know what you're looking at, know what goes into those tow fees and what goes into the, the practice of towing at that particular accident, because educating yourself on these things will go a lot farther than you could possibly imagine. I think, you know, the more you read the Atri report or get into these webinar type thing, the better educated as a member you are and the better equipped you are to handle situations like this to avoid that practice and realize that. I think highlighting the Maryland the Maryland case of, of actually getting these laws changed has been very favorable. And it shows that there's a blueprint in this industry for actually doing it at the state level and right. and getting a tower rate sheet or a tow tow truck of towing company of choice, so to speak. Um, There is opportunity to do that. And I think it's one of those situations. If you can do it at one state, there are several others that will possibly follow suit just because you've laid the blueprint of actually getting it done. And I think that works like a charm. I really do. I think there's a there's an opportunity to follow that same practice and, and hopefully combat this problem nationwide. The question becomes, you know, what is fair and what is enforceable? Because for sure, towing is hard. The equipment costs a lot. And some of these things like, you know, if you drive a tanker of hazmat into the Colorado River, then that probably is going to cost like a hundred, couple hundred grand to clean up, you know. But what they did in Maryland was they had two pieces of legislation pass. And I spoke to Luis Campion about uh, that at the Maryland Motor Truck Association. He said they really framed it in terms of choice, like your ability to choose what you buy in life, which in America, we don't like to abridge that for people. It's one of our big rights. So that one of the things they pushed was you have to have some choice in the towing company that shows up as long as they can get there in a reasonable amount of time, because you're not entitled to block an interstate for, you know, until your preferred towing company shows up from three towns over. But what they looked at was trying to require maximum rates. Companies had filed maximum rates, right? And I think that's what it was. And this again is only on non-consent or police dispatch tows. Yeah. 
um, they establish a clear prevention on holding cargo hostage, which is important. And also, and, and they sought an end to per pound billing. So they would see like in the invoices, and this goes back to being careful with the itemization, you know, they would just write up the tractor trailer that it weighed 80,000 pounds, whether it was loaded, half loaded, empty, Right. Uh, you know, I don't think they're actually putting these wreck trucks on a scale, right, when they do it. And then most importantly, I think on the back end was they tried to make a system for flagging the bad actors and uh, disputes that happen because these people do have to get on a police rotation, right? So sure. if you can demonstrate that they're really ripping people off, then the police ought to adjust them off the rotation. And that's the kind of incentive uh, a tower would be really willing to listen to, right? Because they've got like a million dollar rotator that if they can't get any work for it, then they're they're in trouble. The Maryland legislation went into effect just this year. Not a lot of time under it to see its impacts, as Dave Heller noted. I, I had not yet seen the ramifications <laughs> yeah. Of, yeah. or the benefits, but again, just knowing what's out there and what our carriers deal with and knowing the language that Maryland has gotten gotten through, it's going to be a help. Um, right especially when you work with tow companies that you have a positive working relationship with. Yeah. If you have the right to choose your towing company, you know you're going to get your equipment back. You know you're going to get your cargo back. You don't have to deal with the hassle of arguing or going down that road to do it. You know basically what your statement of fees is going to be when dealing within that accident. And it allevi- alleviates a massive burden to you as a motor carrier having to keep track of that and go down that road and having to constantly contest things for a com- towing company you may not know or may never have worked with. Um, mm-hmm. So it's that opportunity to really experience and educate yourself as a carrier to go down that path. You know, there is, of course, limitation to to the value of that for uh, it relates directly to the reality of trucking. Right? So what what do we do? We move stuff from here, a long way from here, yep. way out there. We probably don't know a tow company out there. Correct. Um, you know, what, what's the solution to that? Is it? Uh, I mean, are there, are there resources that that uh, folks can rely on uh, that? I mean, other than just direct research and establishing relationships in the places that you go, yep. uh, are, are there are there resources for um, uh, tow companies that um, that are vetted uh, and or uh, known to be reasonable towing associations, things of this nature, directories of various natures? And again, there is a towing association. Um, I'm yeah, yeah. not, not yeah. familiar with them as as much as probably in my 18 yeah. years of experience. I know they do exist. The big National Towing Association is TRAA, the Towing and Recovery Association of America. So, and I would imagine they operate a lot like TCA or ATA in the fact that, you know, I have the luxury of representing the best companies the industry has to offer. Does that make sense? So I think the same can be said for them. So um, the reality is, is, Yep, you're delivering freight across this country in places you're not always familiar with. And and here's where association has its benefits, right? Because we have members all across the country and, and networking and peer grouping certainly goes a long way when you go to meetings and start familiarizing yourself with a carrier who may be in North Dakota and you've got a load that's going to North Dakota and you happen to be in Virginia. So um, some of these things work out very well in terms of giving you a point of contact to reach out to and say, hey, I got this tow bill. Um, right. I'm not too sure if this really is legit or not. Um, can you help me out? And I know in this industry, there generally are no secrets in safety and we equate predatory towing as one of those types of situations. So oh, this industry has always been one that's willing to, to bounce ideas off of each other and lend some credence to where credence needs to be lent. There's a lot of great people in towing and recovery, but these associations are beholden to their members, right? And the problem is, you know, okay, so I have choice in who my tower is. I'm in a state I've never, you know, been to before. And they say, okay, do you want to go with Bob's towing or Jim's towing? I have no idea uh, which one of these guys is going to be fair. If I call up Bob's and say, hey, you're not a predatory tower, are you? I'm probably <laughs> only going to make him mad, right? These uh, right. They're really defensive of their industry and of you know what invoices are, are fair. And predatory towing is like, that's a term for people 
in trucking or passenger vehicles to use within the towing industry, I can tell you firsthand they dispute that, you know, all of these things are indeed predatory. Some of the invoices are justified, they say. So right. what I would recommend is go just commercial. Just find a for-profit business that is like a towing network and says, I have people in 50 states that will get to the scene of the crash and abide by these, you know, rules. We have certain guarantees on the yeah. people that we dispatch. So I, I would just go commercial with that. I think that if you were, you know, in the aftermath of one of these situations and you want to report the egregious situation, which is important because far too many victims of these things are so bogged down in the proceedings, they don't tell their story to overdrive or they don't, you know, take their story to the state towing association. So I think though they can be useful in reporting and dealing with that stuff after the fact. Right. But just understand that it's a contested idea. It isn't universal that predatory towing is such and such. And some of the people you talk to might um, dispute it. And, you know, in both the case of insurance or a towing network, the idea is just pay a little bit of money to skip that argument, right? Somebody who agrees with you about what predatory towing is and will just proceed like that, you know? You might just have a trusted network at your fingertips already in the form of the variety of emergency roadside services that exist, from the NTTS directory to the networks of tire makers and truck OEMs. It's been a minute since Overdrive covered the evolution of those services. Since the vast majority of them came fully online well more than a decade ago, two or three in some cases. Stay tuned for more on that front. I teed up the next subject, parking lot trap type toes, with Dave Heller by noting that while the Maryland example didn't cover that fount of particularly egregious activity from some local towing companies around the nation, we do have at least one recent history example farther west. The Maryland example when it comes to legislation is sort of like the most recent one, right? But, it is. but there is... Uh, there is out in Colorado also an example that goes back about four or five years ago. And they, and they also, the Maryland legislation uh, applies only to your sort of uh, police ordered toes, I believe. Correct. And, but out in Colorado, they, they took a little, took a little farther and, and, and some of what they did such as uh, uh, sort of outlawing basically the, the booting, I think, and or towing of an occupied vehicle <laughs> is something is something that, that hits directly on a major concern of my readership uh, that we hear about far too often, which is uh, the, the sort of parking parking lot traps oh, that, yeah. uh, that folks are. Are, are lured into and then uh, booted and or hooked to and immobilized while they're sitting there in many cases you know sometimes with pay pay at your pay or park at your own risk signs but often obscured uh hard to see easy to miss um is there anything that legislatively that can be pursued in that regard um you know whether at the state level I mean, is Colorado a good example, I guess, yeah. is the question. And you know, again, there's o there's always opportunity, right? It's, yeah. I think the, the underlying theory of let's never assume that our representatives and elected officials know the issue that is problematic for us. So in yeah. saying that, engage with your representatives at the state level, because this yeah. is really a state issue, right? Because you now have... <laughs> positive towing bills in Colorado and Maryland because they've engaged at the state level, um, mm. engage with those officials, point out what has been done that's wrong, pro, pro, point out the predatory processes that have fallen into place there and where you've been wronged. And I think telling that story has always been a good thing and will continue to be a good thing because the more people we have telling it, the more of an impact it's going to have, whether that's the state fed, state level or the federal level, level that I work at, um, certainly gets into that game, that game, no doubt about it. I mean, is there any role for, for federal uh, legislation in this arena? I mean, is there any even sort of jurisdiction given the nature of a lot of these operations? 
they can take note of it and 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 go down that road. But a, a lot of these involve state laws, um, yeah. which is what made Maryland so successful, is because they took it up at the state level. I wonder if um, you know some of the things we talk about when it comes to uh, reining in um, some of the some of the big bills that we see uh, from roadside toes where crashes involved. I think some of that stuff can be applied here. Yeah, uh, in, in the parking pirate kind of situation. Um, as well uh but when, when you when you start talking about it just involving the the local uh the local tow boards and and you know just re- researching the the local laws that govern these folks because in, and they're they're different all over the place and, correct it becomes one of those things looking at locally what some of those rules and regs are and and getting law enforcement involved at times like that when that yeah when that truck gets a boot on it and the driver's still in there and he's, I can't possibly move the truck now because you've put that boot on it, it certainly makes no sense. And and going down that road and engaging with the lawmakers, whether it's locally, state or federal, going down that road, and you probably have more of an impact locally and federally or statewide speaking. My esteemed colleague, Alex Lockie, answering more or less the same question and thinking about it practically for an owner operator unlucky enough to fall prey to obscured signage or another trap. While this stuff is still kind of fluid and in motion and, you know, they're they're still towing the equipment and this is that is happening. You have a lot of leeway to keep this going from court and keep this from becoming like a drawn out legal battle and stuff. So I think just knowing what you're talking about, being conversant about the the laws and in the town and you know it's just like anything else if you give the tower the impression that this is going to be a tough one that you know you're going to assert your right uh if if you're documenting everything if there's clear cut documentation where you can just off the top dispute things off the off the invoice you know like yeah. hey, this equipment wasn't on scene that long or especially if you can uh, poke holes in their narrative at any point. You know, you it would be good to demonstrate that you are clocking exactly what they're doing and how they're adhering to the ordinances and stuff. I've seen some cases where they got the entire bill back and some legal expenses because the tow from a parking lot, they didn't store the truck properly on the impound lot. It was elsewhere or um you Mm -hmm. can even maybe in some cases press charges sometimes the tower will enter the cab with a i think it's called the big easy it's like a kit that gets you into car and truck doors so document any wrongdoing and we all know just from experience you know if somebody's like on your back documenting what you do you're gonna stand a little straighter and be a little more cautious and geez maybe i would be willing to cut the invoice down um just to to avoid the person's uh follow through so right. it all comes down that that whole documenting uh the accident section i think all of that would apply you can find Lockie's step-by-step guide to defending against predatory practices via the link in the show notes or in the post that will house this podcast at overdriveonline.com slash overdrive hyphen radio. Find the post for January 29, 2024. I'll also include some links in both places to a few past stories of success that owner-operators and small fleets have had, documenting the scene of the crime, as it were, in those parking lot trap situations. One in particular involved what seemed to be purposely obscured signage. For instance, they at least got the tow company sideways with the locale in which it operated. Not a full refund for the, I believe it was a boot in that particular case. And as both Alex Lockie's reporting and Dave Heller's commentary on the issue emphasized, if it happens to you, at the very least report any egregious practices to the trucking and or towing associations. In the case of the trucking associations, the recent history examples of statewide legislation around towing we have came in part as a result of the work of the state associations. 
and others like the Owner Operator Independent Drivers Association. Because if you look at Maryland and Colorado, they both are their great associations and they yeah. know the ins and outs on, on the state capitol. So certainly be able to get tell that story to those that will listen. As noted, find more links to our resources via the show notes wherever you're listening. Overdrive Radio is on Spotify and SoundCloud, Apple and Google Podcasts. Tune in, most any podcasting platform. Subscribe there so you don't miss an episode. And you can find me and all of our episodes at overdriveonline.com slash overdrive hyphen radio. Here's a big thanks for listening. Overdrive Radio is a production of Overdrive, the voice of the American trucker. It's edited and produced by me, Todd Dills, with the acoustic guitar and other support of trucker songwriter Long Haul Paul Marhofer. The theme is Legend of the Snake Man by Marhofer, featuring the guitar work of Travis, the snake man himself, Lamech, Terry Two Socks Richardson on bass, keys by Tishomingo Jim Whitehead, and on drums, Andrew Marshall. The podcast is backed up further by Overdrive's own news editor Matt Cole, executive editor Alex Locke, who we heard from today, and video editors Lawson Rudisel and Andrew Quinn. Till next time, keep it proud.